Is God's choice to save you unconditional? Or is there a condition for your salvation? God's choice to save you is not conditioned on your morality, your good or bad deeds. It is conditioned upon your faith, your willingness to humbly confess your bad deeds and place your trust in the goodness of Christ. Calvinists wrongly conclude that God's choice to save you is not conditioned upon your faith, because faith itself, according to Calvinism, is a good deed, which mankind is born morally incapable of doing, even in response to the clear revelation of the gospel. For instance, Calvinistic pastor John Piper says, election refers to God's choosing whom to save. It is unconditional in that there is no condition man must meet before God chooses to save him. Man is dead in trespasses and sins, so there is no condition he can meet before God chooses to save him from his deadness. The Calvinist has wrongly concluded that to be dead spiritually is equal to being morally incapable of responding even to God's truth. Therefore, the Calvinist will often conclude that we are dead much like Lazarus in the grave and cannot come to Christ until he calls us out by name individually. However, if we examine the story of Lazarus more closely, it reveals a truth that flies in the face of the Calvinistic conclusion. Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there so that you may believe. Now, why would Jesus say this if the Calvinistic doctrine of irresistible grace is true? If effectual grace causes faith, then it would seem superfluous to refer to a miracle as helping them to believe. The Bible never once relates Lazarus' death or his resurrection to our individual salvation. A better understanding of the idiomatic use of deadness in the New Testament is to understand it as separation from God due to our rebellion. Jesus' parable of the prodigal son is a perfect example of one who was separated from the father due to rebellion. As the father concluded upon the son's arrival home, for this son of mine was dead and he's alive again. He was lost and is found, Luke 15, 24. His deadness is in reference to his lostness or his separation from the father due to rebellion, not a lack of moral capacity to respond and to humbly return home in humiliation. Another biblical example of the use of deadness is Revelation chapter 3 when Jesus is speaking to the church in Sardis. He says, I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up. Strengthen what remains. Clearly, deadness is not referring to a moral incapacity of the church to respond to God, but instead a separation from the Father due to rebellion. Search your Bible. Not once does the scripture tell us that deadness is in reference to a moral incapacity to respond to God's life-giving truth. In fact, the Apostle Paul refers to Christians as being dead to sin, which obviously doesn't mean that we are incapable of sinning, but instead that we are to separate ourselves from sin in much the same way that we were once separated by sin from the Father. The mistake Calvinists have made is equating faith with good deeds. And by concluding that we are not saved by good works, they have also concluded that we cannot believe because that in itself would be a good deed. Imagine if work salvation was illustrated by an eternally high rope that you would have to climb in order to merit or earn your way to heaven. And someone came along and said, it is impossible for you to climb the rope. Your only hope is to let go and trust Christ to carry you. And then a Calvinist came along and said, no, letting go of the rope is also a good deed. You can't do that either. God has to do that for you. What the Calvinist fails to understand is that humbly confessing in faith that you cannot merit salvation is not itself meriting salvation. We are saved not by our own righteousness, or even by our faith. We are saved by the imputed righteousness of Christ, placed onto us by God's grace. So the good news of the gospel is that our salvation is not dependent upon our good deeds or our ability to climb the rope to heaven, but instead it is conditioned upon faith in Christ, letting go of the rope and trusting him to carry us. To help us spread the news of God's love and provision for all people, please visit Soteriology101.com. 
And remember to like this video, share it, and subscribe to our channel.